Um, thank you very much for the kind introduction, and uh, thank you very much for not um, outlining my experience in missile defense in my biography. Um, why is that? Because there is no uh, experience in missile defense. I was, um, well, I still am a, a recce man, armored cavalry, and they put me into the MOD in Berlin and told me what to do, missile defense. And, um, well, the, the question in my face was, um, why is that me? Um, there are so many, so many within the armed forces that are experienced with missile defense. And they told me, well, the, the reason we put someone from the armed forces, from the army, is uh, missile defense in Germany is uh, mainly done by the Navy and by the Air Force. And um, we need someone in between that is somehow um, making sure that no, no side wins and um, the Secretary of Defense gets a more or less um, neutral picture of what this is all about. And we need someone from the Army to explain to the Secretary of Defense why we uh, definitely need to read Clausewitz from time to time, as we just heard. Thank you very much. Now let me express my gratitude for giving me the opportunity to touch the issue of missile defense with a European perspective in this uh, community of experts. I feel very honored. And if I say European, uh, perspective in this uh, issue. Um, let me make sure that uh, if I say European, it is not the European Union, but it is um, the European partners of NATO that are dealing with uh, missile defense. The European Union is, um, has so far not taken um, uh, a serious look at missile defense, but the NATO partners, the European NATO partners do um, indeed do so. And uh, checking the internet this morning, we are still 28 European members of NATO. And um, indeed, we are growing next year to 29, including, of course, Canada and the United States. Open dialogue about uh, significant common issues of security policy and strategy is, I believe, extremely important. For this reason, I consider this conference to be a very good opportunity to gain further details and thoughts on our perspective, uh, perspectives and work. I am indeed glad, in particular, to share European views now that the build-up build of the NATO missile defense has come quite a way since the Lisbon NATO summit in 2010, when NATO decided to build up a ballistic missile defense capacity. The goal to establish the NATO ballistic missile defense covering and protecting the European territories and populations against a limited missile attack by the year of 2020 has been, and I must admit, still is, quite ambitious. Although the technology has remarkably improved, there are still some challenges to tackle. Being aware of the challenges of missile defense for example, having the necessary assets and program available within a decade, or decade plus minus, all of us have agreed about one thing from the outset. What it needs is a determined effort on all sides. That was true in the beginning when the heads and states of governments gave us the direction, and still is of importance now that we are about to announce that we achieve ballistic missile initial operational, uh, operational capability at the NATO summit in Warsaw next week. At this point, um, let me express our appreciation to our US partners for the enormous efforts they put into the missile defense of European territories and populations, not only by setting up single assets, but with the entire so-called European phase adaptive approach offering NATO state-of-the-art protection. We are fully aware that this effort is subject to strained basic financial parameters and in fierce competition with other engagements worldwide. So we are quite glad. Let us take a look at um, where we are for a moment first. 
some of you are aware of, um, some of you on the panel are aware of uh, how significant the U.S. contribution to NATO ballistic missile defense have been since the 2012 Chicago summit, when NATO announced the achievement of an operational um, BMD interim capability. There are now four U.S. BMD capable Aegis, Aegis ships home ported in Spain, and the Aegis, Aegis ashore site in Romania has been operating for several weeks now. Another Aegis ashore site in Poland is um, with the groundbreaking ceremony. It will be hopefully finalized and operational in 2018. And the uh, forward-based early warning radar site in Turkey has been operating since 2011. But, it, but the decision by NATO heads of states and government to declare BMD in a, uh, IOC does not only depend on progress achieved by the United States, it also depends on progress in a number of other areas. Let me give you a short overview of what will likely be addressed to the heads of states and governments next week. They will consider the state of play with regard to the evolution of the threat. The Wales Communique 2014 repeated that the threat to native populations, territory and forces posed by the proliferation of ballistic missile continues to increase and that missile defense forms a part of a broader response to counter it. Wales also repeated that should international efforts reduce the threats posed by ballistic missiles and proliferation, NATO missile defense can and will adapt accordingly. These quotes from the summit communique show that NATO is not developing a ballistic missile de defense capability in the abstract, but on the basis of threat assessments and forecasts. Some of you might ask, whether the recent Vienna agreement with the Iran had any impact on our BMD plans? The short answer is no. Three reasons in short. First, NATO welcomed the agreement with, uh, with, um, which addresses Iran's nuclear program and which will take eight years to implement. Allies certainly hope that the agreement will put through and that the relationship with Iran will improve further over the next decade. But allies also are aware that the Vienna Agreement did not address Iran's ballistic missile program, which remains a deep concern to us. Second, NATO BMD is not aimed at any single country. It looks at a possible threat from more than one country and from the broader region outside the Euro-Atlantic area. And third, NATO BMD is a long-term program. We cannot afford, nor would it make any sense, to stand up or hold a capability development program depending on the mood of the day in just one single country. So, questioning the program by referring to the deal of this originates from a clear misperception. All in all, security experts fully understand these arguments. However, um, I do see a constant need for convincing our public why we do need the program after all. And um, I must admit, um, convincing our public is being in fierce financial competition with other needs the European continent faces today. Whatever difficulties we'll, we'll over, we will overcome in our way, we need to communicate that missile defense is not a universal remedy or the magic bullet, but a system supporting deterrence and complementary to diplomacy and other means. Germany is fully aware that NATO ballistic missile defense is not offering a 100% protection, but the opportunity to minimize consequences of a limited attack. In Warsaw, at this NATO summit, we will also take stock of other voluntary national contribution the NATO BMD system is based upon, in addition to those provided by the United States. Until now, we have not said too much on this in public. However, it is a fact that since Chicago, the Chicago summit, 
other allies are contributing to NATO ballistic missile defense as well. All in all, for example, through hosting arrangements, lower layer, lower layer air and missile defense systems, air and missile defense protection assets, naval or land-based radar upgrades, or acquisitions that could be made available to the Alliance. Let me give you an example. I mentioned the Maritime Forum at Sea demonstration in Scotland last autumn. The exercise, the event showed that nations can contribute to ballistic missile defense by protecting BMD-capable Aegis ships or queuing their sensors. So far, ballistic missile defense in Europe, the European public, and I must admit, at political circles too, is regarded as a US project. My opinion is, the more we say in public about non-US voluntary national contributions, the better we will be able to demonstrate that this is a truly multinational effort. Perhaps now that we reach BMD IOC in Warsaw. However, we will see. The European public is still um, quite critical on the BMD program. First of all, probably because of the financial uh, challenges. NATO will also assess progress achieved in the programmatic area. BMD 3I represents the backbone of NATO ballistic missile defense. It includes both the functionalities required for the planning and execution of the NATO ballistic missile mission, as well as the interface with the sensors and weapon systems which are offered voluntarily by allies. This is actually the only portion of the NATO ballistic missile defense which is commonly funded by all 28 allies. It is fair to say that the program is progressing. However, not without some challenges, which are mostly due to the complexity of the program and the need to accommodate BMD and the broader integrated air and missile defense architecture. In any case, it is fair to say that allies acknowledge that NATO's commonly funded BMD program will probably not be completed by the time of Warsaw next week, and more will need to be achieved in the years ahead. And this is of true importance for the European countries. Um, I come to that later. Another important point: we, as a military, need to reassure that we that we do have everything that is needed to perform the mission with the assets available: plans, doctrines, technical performance, personnel training, and exercises, and interoperability are parts of this consideration all within 28 partners. The operational certification of systems and procedures has been carried out some weeks ago, and as far as I hear, we have received the reassurance from the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe that we can operate with capability. But NATO is not only to look at itself and to look at its own problems, we also need to consider the wider strategic environment. Talking about Russia, we all agree that the Lisbon 2010 euphoria regarding a possible NATO-Russia cooperation and willing, willingness to achieve transparency has more or less evaporated. It was Russia that stopped all further work on ballistic missile defense back in 2013, even before the Ukraine conflict and um, before the inherent conflict became evident as well. On one hand, Russia has never accepted NATO's claims that the system BMD is designed to deal with the dual threat of ballistic missiles and weapons of mass destruction emanating from the Middle East. And Russia maintains that it is actually directed at its own strategic nuclear capabilities. On the other hand, there are accusations that Russia is violating the INF Treaty and modernizing its strategic nuclear arsenal. This has resulted, all in all, in a growing climate of distrust. That said, the aim of NATO BMD and NATO's planned BMD course of action have not changed. NATO BMD was not and is not and will not be against Russia. The NATO summit in Wales took place after the Russian illegal annexation of the Crimea area, 
But in Wales, the alliance did not change the basic principle. I do not believe that the Warsaw summit next week will change this basic approach. The reasons for sticking to the plan, for not aiming BMD at Russia, are quite simple. First, NATO capabilities are too limited. Planned interceptor numbers too few, and Aegis's shore sites in Romania and Poland either too far south or too close to Russia to undermine its strategic deterrent. Second, Russia has too many and techno technologically too sophisticated BN, uh, ballistic missiles for NATO to rely on BMD as an efficient and cost-effective response. Despite all misunderstandings and disputes, let me be clear that we strongly reject heated rhetorics in general addressing countries such as Poland and the Baltic states which are concerned about their neighbor's intentions in the wake of its actions in Ukraine. We can consider Russian statements threatening to target allies because of their support for NATO ballistic missile defense unacceptable, unjustified, and in the end counterproductive. But to be honest, many of Russians, Russia's concerns are wider than just the NATO BMD project. They are, not, they are not for NATO and itself to address. The Europeans are not ignoring the importance of strategic stability, but there is a very little margin for maneuver for NATO if Washington and Moscow cannot settle on the broader picture. Russia needs to discuss strategic stability issues first and foremost with the US bilaterally. Today, Europe is confronted with a variety of different challenges to its security. At the same time, it faces a changing global environment with a more connected, contested, and complex world. A considerable amount of uncertainty is lying ahead. It is also clear to me that European protection against ballistic missiles cannot be considered in isolation but will have to be coordinated and communicated with a number of third states that may also be affected. The effect of weapons of mass destruction does not stop at national borders, and the avail availability of protection may also bring with it an ob obligation to protect one's friends and neighbors. However, the success of such a program cannot be limited to techno technological aspects and engineering challenges. To a greater degree, it is also necessary to involve our neighboring countries, which are not NATO members. A precise, open, and trustful communication strategy should be applied in order to signal our intention clearly and credible. Talking about Germany, um, with respect to sensors and effectors, Germany so far, Germany so far contributes to NATO's BMD program with uh, the lower layer air defense system Patriot and our surface to air missile operations center, which provides a unique command and control capability for air missile defense forces. The possible sensor upgrade of our frigates aiming at an initial capability for the lower and upper layer is on the home stretch. Um, I do expect the decision this summer. Sensor integration studies with partners are in progress. So, all in all, in, in, within Germany, there are things going on. A word on the future tactical air defense system. Germany has decided to proceed with our national project for integrated air missile defense by choosing and developing a new ground-based air missile defense system. In German, we have the abbreviation TLDS. It will be based on MEADS technology and will replace our current Patriot units in the medium term. With this decision, Germany will maintain and improve its, its significant air missile defense capability over the next decades. Furthermore, Germany will continue to contribute to crucial area within the NATO force portfolio and to the NATO ballistic missile defense program in the lower layer system category. In our view, an investment in this capability area is very important. In 
important because there is a need to significantly improve both quality and technology in order to effectively meet future threats and challenges, challenges especially for the forces being deployed. Turning toward the upper layer, military operations in all, in all operational domains, sea, air, land, cyber, and space, are relying on the availability of space-based products and, products and services. Space support to operations turned out to be a major advantage in recent operations. But these space-reliant, networked, intel-driven operations come with a price a growing dependency on the ensured availability and uh, functioning of space systems. A lot of mission types and weapon systems are critically dependent on wideband um, uh, satellite communications and satellite navigation. Since space-based systems have become so critical to the successful functioning of the state and of society in general, space situational awareness in addition to its techn technological relevance, also has gained a political dimension. And I must admit, Europe can do and must do better than we have done before, than we have done so far. International cooperation is emerging into a network of space, uh, space situational awareness centers, exchanging and processing space surveillance and tracking data in support of collision avoidance and re-entry monitoring. From a national security standpoint, suitable governance and data policy mechanisms are key for the safeguarding of national security interests. In Germany, we follow an interagency approach to benefit from possible synergies between research, military, and commercial applications. The German Space Situational Awareness Center serves as an example for this path. The deep integration of space into all aspects of warfare calls for a set of military capabilities and all relevant core functions of space operations. Given the technical, functional, and operational similar similarities of space situational awareness and early warning missile defense sensors and data centers, a future technical and procedural integration comes to our mind. In Germany, this integration will be practiced in the German Air and, Sp and Future Space Operations Center. The aim is to fuse relevant space surveillance and tracking data into a future, future missile warning function, while keeping the military missile defense mission separated from the civil aspects of the space situational awareness. This is of utmost importance to gain the civil support to, um, uh, to this approach. As an interagency approach, we are currently working on full operational capability of the Space Situational Awareness Center under the management of the German Air Force and the prominent participation of German Space Administration. This full operational capability we hope um, um, to expect in 2020. In parallel, the Ministry of Economics and Technology has financed research on the German Experimental Space Surveillance Tracking Radar, GESTRA, which will be operational hopefully next year. This sensor will enable Germany, in combination with the tracking and Im imaging radar, to track, identify, and follow objects in space. The sensor will be, will be connected, of course, to the German Space Situational Awareness Center. Data will be used for research and development, as well as for operational space situational awareness purposes. Within the German interagency approach, we started out with the space situational awareness, and most likely this will remain the primary role. But once the political preconditions are set, any German element within the future missile defense architecture will be, of course, integrated into the, the system of the systems of NATO ballistic missile defense. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that this conference will successfully convoy us on our way towards a common security area for our nations. Looking forward 
to a lively exchange of views, a successful conference, and a pleasant and stimulating stay, of course, in the beautiful city of Tel Aviv. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the day.